How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Eastern with Jim Valley on Saturdays and Sundays with me. Look at that. Look how I timed that intro. Happy Sunday to everybody. Last night, a lot of wrestling. This week, a ton of wrestling. A lot to talk about today on the show. I want to get your thoughts also. Send me a tweet. At Andrew Zarian, I want to know everything you thought about the last couple days of wrestling. Because, you know, there's a ton going on. AW, AW Collision last night. I was going to say AW Fastlane. I was like, oh my gosh. That's a nightmare pay-per-view. Uh, AW Collision was last night. Edge debuted. They were in Utah. The attendance was not so good. But we'll talk about that. WWE Fastlane PLE. Took place, sold out. They had over 13,000 people. I think they announced 14-something for that building. We'll break that down. It was okay. You know, tag title change. John Cena wrestled. I mean, it was a busy card. Just, I don't know. I, I It was, for me personally, it was a struggle yesterday watching wrestling. I don't know why. It, it was, you know, the back and forth, the channel flipping is not as seamless as it was in 1998. I'll tell you that. Going from channel 3 to channel 24 was much quicker than going from Peacock to YouTube TV or whatever service you're watching uh, Collision on. NXT counterattack on AEW on Tuesday. This is going to be a very interesting conversation because I've never seen WWE send so much top talent to NXT to counter-program AEW being on a different night. We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more today on Wrestling Observer Live. Hey, send me a message. Let's, I want to find out what you're thinking. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline, Sunday edition. Let's start with the news. I thought we were over this. I thought the CM Punk vortex had, had expired. It was life after punk, uh, especially for AEW, obviously. Uh, I think we made it two weeks without speaking about him. And guess what? We're speaking about him. This is a fascinating story to me. CM Punk reportedly intending to return to WWE and is in talks with the company. You know, people said, only if hell freezes over. People said, never will this happen. I have personally no insight on this. I don't know if he's going. I've heard what you have heard. Dave Meltzer reported in the Wrestling Observer this week regarding Punk. There, there is obviously a ton of people regarding his uh, t- ton. Of, I can't, I'm, I'm so sorry. There's t- this is not our producer's fault. I just forgot how to read. Regarding CM Punk, there's, a, there's obviously a ton of talk regarding him returning. There have never been rumors that there have been rumors that it's happening. I cannot read today. I'm so sorry. Uh, But those in WWE have only said that there's no deal uh, and it's not complete. And those close to Punk have told us, this is Dave saying this, that uh, he is intending on returning and the two sides are in talks. Is this a positive or is this a negative? Uh, I mean, for WWE, this is a very much an optics positive. They took Cody. They took Jade. Now they're taking CM Punk. Listen, I, I think, you know, if you're in a war, uh, you know, for I know, listen, the, 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 the WWE is very much ahead right now. But in terms of what, right? Like, what do you want? What do you what are we talking about? We, they're ahead as far as, you know, market capitalization. They're ahead with viewership. They're ahead with live gate. They're ahead with all that stuff. They, and they should be. They're a machine. But this doesn't look great. You know, if you're an AEW fan and you're, you know, or you're discovering wrestling and the 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 discourse online is not going to be great around this. You know, and there's going to be two schools to this. One is going to be, how could they bring this lunatic in? Not, not their words, not mine. And the other side is going to be, wow, look, AEW's dying. WWE does not care about people criticizing them for bringing in CM Punk. They care about people thinking this is, a, this is another uh, major blow to AEW's growth. Which, by the way, it is. And you're a fool if you think it's not. You know, this disaster, the CM Punk disaster that happened uh, is a negative for this company. You know, and Tony tried. I'm not saying that Tony messed it up or anything, but he tried to make this work and it didn't. 
for numerous reasons. You, I'm not even picking a side. I'm not blaming anybody. It just It's one of those things that didn't work. But can it work in WWE? Well, it depends. I think the structure is a little bit better there for someone like CM Punk. If he comes in once in a while to do these, a program here or a program there, he could probably be kept in a box. That's not to say that the wheels won't come off. But, you know, you're, he has ties with Endeavor. He's friends with Dana. There's more to this than just WWE. There could be a UFC commentator position. There's Endeavor that could get him uh, acting roles. This is a machine. And if you're CM Punk and you like to leave wrestling and do other things, you kind of want to be part of that machine. Uh, you know, the matches are endless. The possibilities are endless. But it is a big risk to take. One, uh, he's gotten hurt numerous times. Two, the age. Three, uh, the behavior issues. Doesn't matter. And I'm not even saying like one side or the other, right? We None of us know the actual happenings of what goes on in people's heads. This is fascinating stuff. And, you know, if he goes there, it's definitely changing the plans for Mania. It's changing the plans for Rumble. Obviously, Survivor Series, if this happens at Survivor Series, which is taking place in Chicago. But there's two parts to this also, right? If you're WWE... And you have no intention on bringing this man in. You do not want to lead your audience into thinking he's coming back. I think that's a real bad thing to do. But if he is coming back, you know what's a great thing to say? No deal has been completed yet. That's, I mean, that's, that's neither denying or accepting. We don't have a deal yet fascinating stuff mg what do you think i, I want to get your thoughts on this really quickly before i move on to uh edge okay um, or not. yeah so <laughs> there you go <laughs> uh so uh yeah um i as far as this goes i i don't know man i like the guy i just don't think he's um uh I don't trust him. It's, is that is that a bad thing to say? Listen, I don't know, I don't man. I, I'm going to tell gonna you work. something, and, and this is not this is just me telling you my side of like what I've experienced. There have been, I have been in a in a very uh, toxic work environment for me, where I have lost my mind. Okay, mm -hmm. and I have and I have done, you know, I've said things that I shouldn't have. Right. Did this place just enrage this man to the point that he just couldn't even do what he wanted to do? Possibly. Can he go to WWE? Mm -hmm. It's a new structure and things are a lot different there. And he'll, you know, he'll come out and say it's, they're far more professional and they're great. Yeah, it, that's a possibility too. I, I, we're we're going to find out. Here's the other side to this, right? So Punk's gone. Adam Copeland, Edge, make, made his debut at Wrestle Dream. This is something that we were talking about. Whether or not he will show up. And he did. He showed up in the Darby Allen match. Uh, during the scrum. Copeland said. That he and WWE just had. a Just outgr had outgrown each other. And that he's starting full time on, on Wednesday. And he was there on Wednesday. He was there on, on Saturday. And there he's going to be on TV. He's going to be a regular there. This is a full time deal. Does Edge have the same draw power as CM Punk we're gonna find out I, I you know Punk was very unique he wasn't around for so many years and then he showed up and you know he, he, there was controversy surrounding his exit every time so you know, I, I wouldn't say that you know it, it, it it's it's gonna do the same but long term we don't know I think long term is the story here with Edge not not yesterday's ratings or today's ratings I think this is where this conversation is going to go. But the dream matches are endless for both guys. Totally. I, I, I think you're going to have a, a, a nice mix. And also, there's other people from WWE coming to AEW soon. That, that's a guarantee. How are those guys going to incorporate and, and go into this? A lot of changes here for everybody. And very important changes. It almost because feels like. Yeah, it almost feels like there's trades happening. <laughs> Even though don't say not, that because right? you know what? There's a lot of people think that there <laughs> there literally is trades happening. 
I know, and, I know. And that is that's not, really, that's, you know, that's nowhere, that, that's an impossibility. It doesn't work like that. It's definitely a coincidence. I get that. But, you know. <laughs> Two but, rival companies saying, hey, I'm going to give you this one for this one. <laughs> Listen, you know, AEW is a very different company. The structure's changed from the time that it started. You know, 2019 to now, 2020 to now, very different. A lot of different people in key positions. So we'll see what happens here. Very, very curious. Uh, he also kept the steam, team. if you guys have noticed that. And mm -hmm. Beth Phoenix did the intro of her saying, "I, you think you know him. It's her voice on it, which is pretty cool. Very interesting stuff. AW next week. NXT. This is an insane counter-programming. We're going to spend time on, on this a little bit in the next when we're talking about AEW and, and everything else that happened, but... Fascinating, fascinating stuff here with this. I can't believe that The Undertaker's going to show up. That's insane. <laughs> I mean, can you believe that? Also, a quick note from Wrestle Dream, which I, I very much liked. I thought it was a fantastic pay-per-view. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because it's, it's old news now. But, man, that Brian Danielson match with Zack Sabre Jr., one of my favorite matches in many, many years. Absolutely loved it. Uh the the Aussie Open match with FTR, great match. Edge showing up, great. Darby Allen and K Christian Cage, fantastic match. Callis Family match, great. This is where AEW does great stuff. This is this is really the good stuff for them. And you know what? Uh, thrilled that they're doing these monthlies now. Or are they not? Or are they? We'll find out. So we got that. We got uh, we got NXT. And everything else happening here. We're going to a break. When we come back, we're going to go into last night's shows. All of it here on Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here with me, Andrew Zarian. Let's talk about Fastlane. You know, I enjoyed it. It was a fun... It was okay. It was a good pay-per-view. Like, I... You know, I, I felt that, you know, last week's pay-per-view was up my alley a little bit more, but this was fine. Show opened up Cody Rhodes, Jey Uso, defeating the Judgment Day, Finn Balor and Damian Priest to become the new Undisputed Tag Team Champions. Uh, I think we're getting new belts eventually. I, I've, uh, I've seen this rumbling. I don't know if this is the moment to do it, but there's no reason to carry around two titles if, if it's one title now. <laughs> You're not splitting them. Uh, interesting part, there, there was a bunch of Bullet Club references here, right, MG? Yeah, two different times. Uh, Michael Cole said it on commentary, as plain as day, he was talking about uh, Finn Balor and um, Cody both being leaders of the Bullet Club. I guess it's a little looser interpretation when it comes to Cody, but yeah, they they threw it out there, and I was like, that was interesting. It's fascinating on, how that, how that stable know. has... has expanded in every single company right every company yeah, it's canon uh, everywhere now it's canon everywhere right. now uh it is probably the uh, one of the only factions to ever have that uh i mean i don't know what it means but <laughs> yeah it's there yeah it, it, interesting lwo ray mysterio santos escobar and carlito with zelina vega defeated bobby lashley and the street profits lashley looked off did you guys notice that I noticed it a little bit, but I got a better question for you. Yeah. Why did why why did they insist on having Carlito wait like nine minutes into the match before he came out? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That why, was I, I don't just, know. It, it, yeah. I, it it just I, I know what they were going for, but it just didn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, like, I I, I, I don't know. I, I thought really? <laughs> I thought that was that was a weird start to it. I would like to see Carlito there the entire match, but you know, they're telling the story here. Story was yeah. Rey Mysterio got his butt kicked, and then here comes Carlito for the save. Uh, Carlito looks like a million bucks, dude. A for million age, bucks. Yeah. He it's looks so that's, good. That's in his 40s and looking awesome. Use him. You 40s know, is the new 30s in wrestling. You know, yeah, 40s is the new 30s in wrestling. EO Sky defeated Asuka and Charlotte Flair in the triple threat match to retain the WWE Women's Championship. A lot of people were speculating that Jade would interfere in this match. Yeah, that was um, the big speculation. I, this was like my second favorite match of the night. There was Very only a couple match. hokey spots, but yeah, 
they did good. They're they're keeping EO strong. Um, <laughs> we'll get into it. We'll probably mention it later. But <laughs> there was she got asked in the press conference if she was uh, going oh, to challenge. I know. Uh, Taylor I know. You know Swift. what? What a dumb. <laughs> what? I feel. You know what I feel what? like that was honestly. Okay, you want me to put on my conspiracy hat here? A troll? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that was WWE going to that guy and be like, "Hey, do me a favor. Ask this question." So they could oh have God. it buzzing. They could have it mm. out there and to kind of set the lure. Oh, you know, like, oh, Please you know not. what? If this goes, <laughs> if like this and you could be like, oh, this idiot asked this dumb question. Right. Everybody could say that. Like, what a stupid question that is. But. If it gets picked up by like Sports Center, or gets picked up by here and it starts getting distributed, could it tickle Taylor Swift to show up? Right, and I'm, and I'm corner. thinking. I, mean, I hope that was yeah. the case, okay? I and even though how ridiculous that is, right? I hope that's the case because if not, it was a really dumb question. I, you I wasted think it a good a question. question. <laughs> you yeah. think so? Oh man, I hope yeah, that there's I a bigger think... consp <laughs> conspiracy. To this. I I just think everybody's getting wrapped up in this whole Taylor Swift uh, phenomenon in the NFL, and someone thought it would be a good buzz question. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. She's she's a hot act. She's the hottest thing right now. She's a conversation, but I mean, I thought it was a. It, I, listen, I, it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be you could shocked tell, if WWE set that up. I don't know if you saw it, but you could tell EO was shook, and it took, uh, it took the two people that speak English better to kind of get it back on track. Yeah, and then she, and then she recovered it. And, well, she was like, so "What are you was crazy?" I think that was her answer, yeah. or something like that. <laughs> yeah, EO's great. I got to I tell you, uh, mm. I, I met her when I took the kids to the garden. Mm -hmm. Uh, and she was so good, and she started screaming at my wife, like in character. <laughs> it was fantastic. Just, just had a blast. Was, was it half? Was it that half broken English or? Half yeah, 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 Japanese? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Jess didn't. Yeah. Jess, uh, forgot to shake her hand. Oh, didn't I didn't pay her respect. I, uh, and I, I called, I, and I started, I, and I started I screaming at Jess. It was me and <laughs> all of them. It was me, uh, Oscar. Uh, I'm sorry, me, uh, uh. Uh, 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 Bailey, Bailey and Dakota. EO, mm -hmm. and Dakota just like pointing our fingers, screaming at my wife in front of everybody. It was the best. I think I joined the crew. I think I'm part of that group now. I'm the fourth member. Right. <laughs> John Cena and LA Knight defeated the Bloodline. Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa with Paul Heyman on the outside. Uh, they waited a while for LA Knight to get that tag, huh? They I, almost too long. I was like, okay, this is dragging out. I wonder they, why. And they did that. Yeah, they did that because I did just think they wanted the audience to get so hyped up. They did that spot where Paul Heyman is uh, supposedly giving commentary to his phone, and we're supposed to believe that was Roman Reigns on the other end. <laughs> that was I a know. weird spot. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, I like that Paul's not dying his hair anymore. Yeah. That that oh, Andrew Zarian jet the, black. Is not uh That's is not on his character, head. right? It's I, yeah. that he's losing that he's he's unwinding. He's he's going gray because yeah. of all the stress <laughs> from yeah. all the uh, Cena stuff. looked better. I mean, he does his thing, man. They eat it up. I, I I'm curious to see where this goes for LA Knight. Is this the match? Does he wrestle John Cena? Does something happen between them? Well, in the uh, press conference, um, John Cena openly admitted that he was off and he knew he was off, and yeah. you could tell he was off. But he said, I will get better. I will work at it. But, um, and we can talk about it a little bit here, but they, he did flat out say the second that strikes over, he might, he might have to just go. So yeah, I don't know what their plans are, but it's going to be very open-ended. I think, I think it's going to be open-ended. I, I hope they do something. And I hope LA Knight is continuing this growth because, uh, you know, the, when, once you catch on fire, uh, that, that flame could dissipate very quickly if you're not pushed properly. Right. So I'm curious to see where they go with that main event. Uh, Seth Rollins. I mean, obviously the main event was John Cena, right? But you can't you can't follow this match. Seth Rollins defeated Shinsuke Nakamura to retain the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, I thought this was a really good match. WWE does a great job at these last man standing matches. They went about 28 minutes. Uh, Shinsuke looked great. Uh, Seth was fantastic. Uh, I you know. I would love to see Shinsuke with that title. And if there was, again, if there was a moment to do it, this would be the moment. 
They obviously didn't do it. Seth Rollins defeated him, retained the title. Uh, any thoughts on this match? Uh, I have a couple. Um, yeah. I actually thought, you know, I, I didn't think it was the best. Um, it's, there's something about how WWE does these where they're counting so slow that it drags the match down sometimes. Yeah. Where when you, AEW does it, it's a death match form, and it seems to move f- faster. But all in all, yeah, there was a lot of heavy spots. Shinsuke Nakamura looked like Shinsuke Nakamura circa 2009 Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, he's getting back to that. 2009? 2009, 2010, somewhere in there, when he was in his prime. In, no, in no, go back. No, you're talking like 2014, 2013, 2015. Mm-hmm. 20, 20, 20, yeah, 2013, 2014, 2015. Yeah, around there. Because he came in 2017, yeah. remember? Uh, We'll check on that, but I think... Uh, nope, you're wrong. I'm right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or 2016 he came I, th- I thought it was 20 early 2017 i thought it was 2016 that was the, okay it could be 2016. but i'm just saying in prime new japan that's what that's what yeah. it reminds no, me no he, he looked just, really he good and he's been great he's been great the last yeah. couple of weeks whatever they've done with him has been has been fantastic um uh, you know I, I this is there's a lot of uncertainty here with this top roster uh with this company right now they, we don't know where these pieces are falling because they don't even know things are changing but I thought this right. was a really good match. So a couple things here. Uh, Jade was shown in the pre-show being greeted by Triple H. She was ready to work. She was in her outfit. That that outfit was something else. <laughs> it got a lot of attention, that's for yeah. sure. <laughs> Pat McAfee announced, uh, appeared to announce the John Cena match. He made a plea for Indianapolis to host WrestleMania. And the, so uh, the big... So- uh, the, yeah, go ahead. Can I can I ask you? Is that the new way, new thing they're doing now? Where, hey, uh, we want to come here, but you have to pay us, so we're just going to make this plea to your uh, your audience and or your population and see if we can entice you to pay for it. Is well, that what I they're think doing? I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe 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 they want to gauge it because that's what they did. That's what they did in um, London, right? With John Cena doing almost the same thing. Yeah. I got to tell you, that actually would be a nice place to put a WrestleMania. It's actually set up very well. I don't think people think of Indianapolis as a tourist destination, but it would actually go well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I we'll see. Um, during the press conference, by the way, uh, Triple H said that Jade will debut when she's ready. Also says he his piece patient and doesn't want to rush her, which I agree with. Uh, he put over L.A. Knight. And made comments uh, and commented on exactly a year ago he was Max Dupree. So think about that, right? The evolution of a character. Fastlane was the highest grossing event they had ever done in Indianapolis. 14,529 was the announced in attendance. Again, this company's hot. This is a hot company. They are hot, regardless if it's your style or not. You know, if you like this kind of wrestling doesn't you know there's there's no denying they are on a roll right now the last year and a half two years has been a positive trajectory for them hopefully aw is gonna you know catch fire again soon which i'm not i'm not worried about that when we come back from break we're gonna talk about collision because last night's collision uh was in utah and it did not do good with attendance but i think the show was put together to kind of build stories and to continue on what we're doing we also saw edges debut we're going to talk about that and a whole lot more when we come back wrestling observer live here on sports byline we'll be back right after this stay tuned wrestling observer live sunday edition here let's talk about last night's collision took place in utah had about 2800 people in the building or 2500 people in the building the last time they were there did like 28 2900 uh, it was one of, the, and this was when the product was hot. This is when they were doing five, six, seven thousand people a show, eight thousand people a show. Uh, it's just not a great market for them. They do need to leave the the saturated markets, but I think part of this is they need to find what's working, what what areas work for them right now, and grow from there. AW World Tag Team Championship match. Big Bill and Ricky Starks defeated FTR to win the titles. And this was a quick match, huh? 
This didn't yeah, go too was. long. Mm. It was like the no, first 16 it, it minutes of the show. Yeah, um, I want to say it was under 10 minutes. The match itself. Yeah, because um, I looked but, at I looked at the was, clock. I was like, I was like, wait, did I miss something? I rewound, and I was like, well, Dax is like well, dead in the ring. I texted you. I texted you and goes, oh my god, they just did yeah. something I didn't expect them to do. Um, so that speculation is, I mean, do you have any insight? Because um, it, that was I, that was surprising for them to lose it at the first match on a collision. Well. Mm. I'll say, um, I, 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 they have a contract till 2027. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a little distracted. That's I'm watching the Tony Storm entrance from last night because I have it on the TV again. <laughs> and she is remarkable. This woman is, her, I, 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 that gimmick tickles me tremendously. I think RJ needs to start managing her. I think that's what we need to do. Anyway, um, I, I, they have a contract till 2027. I know that the story came out that they trademarked CMFTR. You know, maybe that's maybe that's protecting assets at the end of the day. I, I think, uh, you know, that's fine. Uh, I, I don't know if that's a telling sign, but, you know, if you watch the show, you're if, if you don't know anything and all you know is that they, you know, they've got this trademark because that was a big story in the morning. You're thinking like, oh, crap, they're leaving because Punk's going back. And they have a contract till 2027, unless Tony wants to give them an out. Uh, I just wonder if maybe one of them's injured more than we think. And maybe that's could be. They, they and, and you know what? They could also use to mm -hmm. take some time off, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe it was time. Maybe they're, maybe they're banged up. They're both banged up, and they need to take some time off. It just and this made the most random. Sense. That's all. It was it's a just, little you know, random mm -hmm. with, with a mm -hmm. random mm -hmm. new team. Mm -hmm. But I'm liking this Ricky and Big Bill pairing. And I hope Big Bill is able to kind of – listen, I'm biased, okay? I'm going to uh, – you know, I'm honest about, about things that I like. Why do I like Big Bill? Because he's from Queens. <laughs> he's from my town. Not only from Queens. I think he went to Archbishop Malloy. He was a great local basketball player here. I got to support my people. Uh, I, I like I, I like that, you know, and also he's done a tremendous job with changing the trajectory of his life. And I admire that in people. I, it's one of the hardest things to do. And he, he looks like he's doing great stuff. Uh, and Ricky, you know, Ricky's Ricky and he's great. And I hope that this is another thing to kind of elevate him and have him be a little bit more comfortable in the roles that he's in. Brian Danielson, Kyle Fletcher. I really like this match. But again, I like anything Danielson does. I think Danielson needs to start teaming up. Okay, it's Halloween, right? You want you want my ultimate <laughs> wrestling fantasy? Nobody's going to like this. You guys are going to hate this, okay? I want him to become a vampire, and he has a crew of vampires, okay? And in that crew, it, once again, I'm putting RJ City in everything, okay? RJ's in this also, and it's RJ, but RJ is more like the Nosferatu type. You know, he does one of these. Uh then you have Dan Housen. Obviously, he's like the original one. And then you make Brian Danielson a vampire, but he's like a vegan one. He just drains the, 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 he drains the trees and the, and the fruits. The colors dissipate from them. You could do something cool. Like he takes an apple, he bites the apple, and all the red's gone. It's gray. Nobody likes this. You guys have no clue how to book. <laughs> can you guys hear can you guys hear uh, uh our producer john cackling in my ear more vampires in wrestling okay i want to see tony khan get touched by a bit of vampire you don't want to see that he starts walking around like a lunatic with like the the uh the the grandpa al lewis you know vampire al outfit and like he's booking wrestling like this is this just the delusions in my head that, that tickle me all day long? Pretty much. <laughs> is this one of my tub time edibles that I've taken? Yeah. CBD, I think you're nothing illegal. Them... Nothing illegal. Guys, we don't talk about illegal stuff here. Nobody does illegal stuff. Just just a nice friendly CBD the audience... over the counter. What? I'm giving I think you're giving what? the audience a good, um, a good sample of the Matt Men podcast. I'm right giving now. you guys a good sample. This is what we talk about, guys, on Matt Men. It's just, <laughs> it's just the delusional thoughts of Andrew Zarian with wrestling. I love this match. This was great. I, I think Kyle Fletcher you know, put on a great display with Danielson. Danielson's the best. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, after the match, the Gates of Agony jumped Danielson ahead of Danielson's match against Swerve. 
Dude, I want to see him in Swerve. That's going to be great. This is going to be an awesome match. But see, like, this is the thing that I enjoy about AEW, right? Like, a Danielson and Kyle Fletcher match, okay? No knock at Fletcher. Why should I care about this match? Right? If this was in WWE, if this was on WWE TV, this would be a six to seven minute match tops. And it would be a basic match. Why is it? Why? Why when you watch it on AEW, does the importance kind of resonate with it? I think it's the overall presentation of the what they do in the ring. Every it's you know supposed to feel important. What is it? It's Kyle. You actually thought at some point Kyle Fletcher might get a win. They they put him yes. over on commentary. They yes, make they him, did. They make him a bigger star. Yeah. in his presentation and like, oh my, he might actually win. And where WWE, it's very clear that the star is going to go out there and kick butt, and that's going to be it. Yeah. That's the biggest difference in how yeah. they present this. Yeah, because anything could happen. I mean, like, even like Claudio, right? Claudio in, in, in a match on WWE TV versus him in a match here. More importance, because it's a display of their abilities. It's not just a match. Talking about Claudio. Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta hit the ring. They ran off. Uh, setting up, obviously, there's a feud happening here, and it looks like they've gone totally babyface now. This heel in between heel stuff is gone. Bullet Club Gold, Juice Robinson and the Guns with Jay White defeated. M- Meta- he's not Grand Metallic anymore. He's just Metallic. Or you just put Metallic? So. Okay, yeah. Metallic yeah. Gravity and Angelico with Serpentico on the outside. AW World Trios title match: The Acclaim, Max Caster, Anthony Bowen, and Billy Gunn defeated the Iron Savages. Boulder, Bronson, and Jacked Jameson. That Bron- I-, I like Bronson. Bear Bronson, local Long Island wrestler. I call this match. He wrestled for Catalyst Wrestling, I believe, also. In Long Island. Uh, to retain Tony Storm. Now, let's talk about this. I love Tony Storm. <laughs> I love this new character. You know, sometimes I've always liked the Tony wrestling, right? The Tony character with the backwards hat. and the- You know, I remember Dave saying this years ago, okay? And the Observer listeners would would get this. Dave said something really resonated with me. When she was in NXT, right? They said, Mm -hmm. he said, listen, you got to make a decision on her, right? It's time. Because at one point, it's going to be absurd for her to do this gimmick when she gets older. And Mm -hmm. it's not going to translate as well. Bailey too, right? Bailey's a great example of this. Bailey she's was translated well too. Right? Bailey translated very well, but but Bailey had to get injured numerous times and get off a of TV to do this. Mm-hmm. What they've done with Tony Storm oh. is something that doesn't, you know, generally when you have a character change, especially with someone that's liked like this, it, it's it's a hitter. Like it could go either way. This really went the right way. Tony's doing this. She's this fantastic. You know, twentieth mm. early twentieth century actress character, uh, over the top, and you would think on paper like, oh man, how are you going to pull this off? It's great, and it's something that she has embraced. She's doing great. These videos are great. Uh, she's timeless. <laughs> I I it's such a good listen. Man. I and I I'm very honest about what I like. This this does it for me. The character works. And I hope to see it continue to work. Uh, but, you know, Dave, Dave bringing that up was always always stuck with me. Like, you know, she's kind of locked into this box as, like, this hard-hitting, uh, you know, like, tough girl. She wears the hat. She has, like, the, the baseball paint under her eye. I, you know, it got over. It worked. But at some point, you got to change. And she did. And she's now unbelievable. I, I, you know, the funny thing is she keeps talking about her age, right? Like as if she's older. How old is Tony Storm? I, she's not 30. She's 27. Yeah. And, Isn't that unbelievable? And just, it, she's she's remarkable. She started so young, though. She started so young. She's been wrestling for like 14 years. Think about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, kudos to her. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. If somebody else came up with this, good on them. Remarkable. Find my notes here. I lost my notes. Yeah, I'm trying to stall here. <laughs> well, with little little inside of this show. <laughs> Andrew lost all of his notes. Uh, we also got Adam Copeland coming out to address the audience. He tries to get answers from Christian. Uh, 
he tries to get answers from Christian or why he turned on on why he turned on him at Dynamite. He was attacked by Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne. Darby tried to save him. Darby got his arm concertoed, uh, and Edge was laid out, and that was the end of the show. Tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, this is what we have. <laughs> Carmelo Hayes with John Cena versus Braun Breaker with Paul Heyman. Roxanne Perez versus Asuka. Pub rules match. Brawling Brutes and, Ty and Tyler Bate versus G Gallus. I was going to say Gallium. Isn't that a comp? Isn't that a on the periodic elements table? Gallium? <laughs> uh, Cody Rhodes to make a major announcement. And it's been heavily implied that The Undertaker will be appearing as there was a gong at the end of the promo. Undertaker's NXT debut at the age of 50, 60 years old almost. <laughs> this is a lineup for AEW backwards. Dynamite. <laughs> AEW Women's title on the line. Soraya defending against Sheeta. AEW International Championship. Ray Phoenix defends against John Moxley. I expect Moxley to get this back. TNT Championship number one contendership. Brian Danielson versus Swerve Strickland. Jay White versus Hangman Page. Adam Copeland versus Luchasaurus. Chris Jericho versus Hobbs. Powerhouse Hobbs. And quick thing, it's Tony's birthday, I believe. Yeah. And I believe AEW has an overrun. I believe. I'm not sure. I think they do. Listen, these are stacked cards. Now, I mean, can NXT, and I think um, also uh, um, uh, there's a couple other people showing up on NXT that I did not announce yet. I'm just not, I'm not certain. Listen, this is a, you know, they, they want to, they want to slaughter them. They think that this is a good move. Uh, AW, it's a, it's, they're not the traditional night. So obviously the numbers are going to be lower. NXC is loaded up. Can NXC do 900,000 people? Yeah, I think they can. We, we're going to get oh, a I good think the plan is to go way higher than that. I mean, if they do I a million, they yeah. can they do a million? Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. I think unopposed a hundred percent, but we don't know. People's patterns are different. So we'll see what happens, but this is a lineup for Tuesday. Going to our final segment. Got a couple other things to touch on. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. Final segment of the show here on Sports Byline. My favorite part of my weekend. Doing the show. Love it. Listen, man, you know, good stuff coming on. We're entering that weird WrestleMania season. It's happening sooner than you think. This thing sneaks up on us. We got another pay-per-view next month from AEW. We got a November pay-per-view coming. We got, uh, we got a December pay-per-view, which I will touch on here. We, we were talking about, and I got a minute and a half to do this. It's going to be quick. We were talking about how AEW is expanding their pay-per-view schedule. Essentially, on every show that I've done, I've, been, I've spoken to people at WBD, and I've been told they're planning on doing you know, at least 12 pay-per-views a year. And when I spoke to somebody about this that would kind of understand, they're like, yeah, but remember, 12, including Ring of Honor, the way that AEW thinks, it's part of their, it's canon. There's no separation because, and, and really the reality is there is no separation because everybody's mixed into everybody's show. Everybody wrestles everywhere. There's Ring of Honor all over AEW TV. So yeah, the 12 can be with the Ring of Honor. So if you do eight or nine and three or four, you know, whatever, there is a December pay-per-view that I am hearing about, and other people too, and it's a Friday pay-per-view, which kind of falls in line with Ring of Honor. I'll have more information on this on Tuesday when I do, we're live pal with Garrett, but it looks like it's going to be the New York market. I'll drop that right there. December 28th, 29th, that Friday, let's see. I'll leave you all with that. Guys, I had a blast with you here on Sunday doing the show each and every week. We'll be back next week with another Wrestling Observer Live. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye for now.